Hi everyone and welcome to the bench. Today we're gonna be taking a little bit of different approach creating and using smart home devices because I'm gonna try and install the Zigbee module on my home assistant setup so that we can use something else for any sensors like this one here or any DIY version that we're gonna try to make later on with Zigbee instead of Wi-Fi. Now, the reason to go with Zigbee is so that we can release the strain on the Wi-Fi network. As you go up and up with more and more DIY or other sensors that are using Wi-Fi, the entire Wi-Fi network gets uh, congested and that can affect both the operation of any smart device connected to it and to your regular devices like smartphones or smart TVs or whatever you're gonna have connected to the network. So. I plan to allow myself to be using Zigbee in the future. And also, if that works, we're gonna try and create our own Zigbee device using the ESP32C6 variants in the form of this uh, DevKit M1 module that I have here. So we will need to check out the dongle. This is one of the popular ones that I looked online and I bought this, so it's not sponsored, but this video is sponsored by Altium 365. Altium 365 is revolutionizing electronic design by bringing every stage of the process from concept to production into one seamless intuitive platform. Say goodbye to fragmented workflows and hello to a unified ecosystem that empowers your entire team to collaborate like never before. With Altium 365, you can work on designs in real time with colleagues across the globe on any device without the hassle of switching between tools. Imagine being able to track design changes as they happen, ensuring your project stays on track and error free. Effortlessly manage components, parts and procurement processes with advanced integration and automation tools that simplify even the most complex tasks. The browser-based platform makes it easy to share projects globally, gather feedback and keep stakeholders updated anytime, anywhere. Ready to transform your design process? Click the link in the video description to unlock your free Altium 365 workspace and experience the future of electronic design today. So if we look inside the box, we have the antenna and the dongle. The thing with Zigbee is that it, because it uses a specific protocol, we need something like this connected to whatever runs our home assistant. In my case, I have a mini PC that's using Procmox, so I'm not sure what the, the exact setup procedure will be, but in theory, if you're using something like a Raspberry Pi, or if you have Home Assistant directly installed on the machine, this should be a fairly simple process where you just plug this to your computer or device and it should be immediately recognized. Now we'll see if that's the case with Proxmox. Okay, so here I am in my Proxmox environment and this is the VM that I have running to run Home Assistant. What we need to do here is to add the USB to be available within the VM. So I've selected the VM here and under the hardware tabs, we need to go and add a USB device. So I'm gonna select this one. So you see Son of Zigbee 3.0 USB dongle. So I'm gonna choose add and hopefully this should make the USB available to Home Assistant. Now let's go to Home Assistant and search for Zigbee. And let's see which one do we actually need here. Okay, I did some searching online and it seems that the Son of Dongle that I have is using the ZMP stack because it's made with the CC2652 chip, if I'm not wrong. So it should be using this. Let's see. Uh, okay, serial device pad. Let me figure that out. Okay, so that was a bit of a challenge because no matter what I did, I couldn't find the address because I was going to settings and then system hardware to look for the right address of the device, specifically within the all hardware, but I couldn't see it here in the list. Now what I did, and you could see now that it's now showing. So it's dev slash T 
TTY USB zero and it is now recognized. But in order for it to be recognized, I had to go in into Proxmox again and I had to physically reboot the VM. Even though I did reboot Home Assistant from within its UI, it was still not showing. So now if we go within settings and devices and services, we can see that it's now being discovered. So we need to go and add it. So yes, and I think this time it will work much smoother because it already has all the pads and everything since it's it was auto discovered. Network formation, we want to create a network because this is the first time that we are using Zigbee in this case. Okay, and that seems to have worked and successfully created the configuration. If we finish, we have one entity, which I think it's the Zigbee dongle itself. Now let's try and figure out how we can add device to it and if it will be recognized automatically and here is the switch wired up i have the incoming live voltage coming in to line in and neutral in the incoming supply comes to live in and neutral in and the light is connected to live out and neutral out this is the switched wire that goes through the relay that's inside this uh, mini switch and we have two more contact s1 and s2 that I connected to just a regular on off switch. So a flip switch and depending on the state of that switch and this one, the light can be triggered both physically as well as uh, triggered from within home assistant. And now I'm gonna power this on for the first time. So let's plug it in. Okay, that should be now live and it is. So we can turn on or off the light using the switch. There's also on this side, there is a push button that we can use as a trigger. And we could also use both of the switches to turn it on or off. And now let's move to Home Assistant so we can add the device. Here we are within the integrations and we have the Zigbee integration with uh, just one device. We need to click on the add device and here we need to hold the button for some time, not sure exactly how much, I think about 10 seconds. That should put the device into pairing mode and it does, so let's call it a test light and this one is within the office so it should be now added let's go and it shows us on and we can control it from within home assistant as well as controlling it through the switches and we can turn it on or off from anywhere and that confirms that our zigbee installation works and we can now start to add devices throughout the house. And what I have here is the dev kit board that I was showing you earlier. I connected to USB and I used one of the example sketches that uh, actually come with the ESP32 configuration that are straight from Espressive. That is a Zigbee dimmable lights sketch that I uploaded to the board. And using the same process where I pressed on the boot button to pair it, I got this where I can now control the LED on the dev kit board. So I can turn it on or I can turn it off and it's controlled through Zigbee on uh, Home Assistant. The sketch said that this is a dimmable light, so I think we should somehow be able to set the level of the LED, but unfortunately I'm not seeing that here. So this is to identify, but I'm not seeing anything that um, would connect and allow me to change the intensity. Let's try to refresh now. So maybe reconfigure. Okay, binding and reporting. 
Did that make any change? No. So there seems to be something wrong with the configuration, but at least the basic functionality works. Additionally, there seems to be, based on the code, there seems to be an option to change the brightness of the light each time we press the boot button, but unfortunately that doesn't work. I'm not sure what the issue is and I don't really have the time currently to inspect it, but we know that we could program this to use Zigbee so we can control our light and we can expand on that in the future to provide more functionality. And with that, we now have a system where we can control Zigbee devices through Home Assistant. We can power them on both from the physical controls of the lights as well as the controls that we have from Home Assistant, including our own DIY devices. And we can expand uh, beyond this. If you have any ideas what we can do and any specific ideas or requirements for projects, feel free to leave them down in the video comments. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the future videos. And I will see you all in the next one. Cheers!